Hello everybody, Martin Radner here from Radner Law Group bringing you trial analysis. Today we're going to be discussing the Attorney General's response to the Alex Murdoch defense team's motion for a new trial based on the jury tampering allegations between Rebecca Hill and some of the jurors. But before we do, please like and subscribe to this channel so we can continue having this trial, uh, this channel grow so we can continue bringing this trial analysis. So, the Attorney General filed the response to the Alex Murdoch defense team's motion for a new trial, and it's interesting to see how they view this motion, meaning what's the basis for this motion? You always have to have a basis in law for what you're doing. You have to have a basis in law for what you're asking the judge to do. So the way that the Attorney General views this motion by the Murdoch team's uh, motion for a new trial is through Rule 29. This is the South Carolina Rules of Criminal Procedure, Rule 29, and Rule 29 is broken down into A and B. B is actually the uh, what they believe this uh, this the substance of what the basis for the uh, Alex Murdoch's team's motion for a new trial, and B is new trials based on after discovered evidence. That's 29B. 29A is for motions for a new trial based on other stuff. You know anything else basically is A, but B is specifically discussing uh, new trials based on after discovered evidence and. After all, this is evidence that was discovered after the trial. This is jury tampering that we did, that the Alex Murdoch's team, defense team, discovered after the trial. So it would seem that they're not too far off base, that 29B should be the rule that this motion is analyzed under. But, as we'll see at the end, I'm not sure 100% if they are correct. So, but certainly, uh, initially, it sounds like they're correct. And because the rule itself doesn't really give you so, so much, it just tells you basically uh, a, a time constraint in which, in which you have to file the motion by, and it also says that if the case is on appeal, like it is in this case, so then you've got to stay the appeal and then send it back to the trial court for them to determine whether this, is, whether this motion for a new trial should be granted or not. So the attorney general, in their response, well, the first thing that they do is they kind of set the tone for how the the judges should approach this motion. Now you said you're filing the motion in the in the court of appeals, and um, this they they're kind of trying to tell the judges how should you view it? Should you view a motion for a new trial liberally? Should you you know be more much more freely to grant this motion for a new trial, or should you be more conservative and not grant the motion, just grant any motion at all, just because they discover new evidence after the trial? So. The first thing that they start off with is a quote from an opinion, a case, State versus Mathis, and the reason why they have to continually quote opinions here, which you always do, but specifically in this case, because the, the court, the, the rule itself, Rule 29B, doesn't really say that much. So you've got to go to the opinions where it gives much more flavor to, uh, to the rule and exactly if there's any requirements or elements that have to be met in order to, you know, in order to, to, to bring this motion for a new trial in order to be successful. So this specific quote is taken from a case, and this is what the quote says. It, 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 this quote has to do with, again, what the feelings of a judge should be when they're looking at a motion for a new trial. This is the quote. There can be no doubt that motions of this sort should be received with the utmost caution. Because, as, as it is said by a learned judge, there are but few cases tried in which something new may not be hunted up. So essentially what this opinion is saying is that you should be very cautious. As a judge, you should be very cautious in just granting motions for a new trial based on newly after-discovered evidence. Why? Because there's always going to be evidence after every single trial that, that, that you did not know about before. There's always going to be something. That that's, that's just the, na the nature of these cases. You can't just have all the pieces of information in front of you. You can't have all the pieces of evidence that are presented in a trial. And if we're going to constantly grant new trials, then you're constantly going to be having the same trial tried over and over and over again because any time that you find any more evidence, which is bound to happen in many, many cases, it happens. And, you know, it's just going to, it's just going to be a never-ending cycle of always trying the same case over and over and over again. And that, obviously, we cannot have. So that's number one why the judges... That this opinion is saying that if you are a judge and you're hearing a case, uh, you're hearing a motion for a new trial, you've got to be very cautious. Don't just grant it because there's a new piece of information. And also, this is what the, this is the quote, again, back to the quote, and also because it tends to perjury. It tends to perjury means that you're opening yourself up to perjury. You're basically asking for people to perjure themselves because 
if they know that if they just discover any sort of evidence after this after the trial and that can get a new trial started well think about it. if you're a family member or if you're a close friend of somebody who's sitting in jail now for the rest of their lives don't, aren't you going aren't you going to want to cook up some evidence that nobody ever heard about before in order to get the guy a new trial so you're opening yourself up to perjury so these are two very important reasons why a judge should be very cautious before just granting a motion for a new trial so this is the, how the Attorney General wants to set the stage, they want to put this in the judge's heads before they even get onto the arguments, is that, number one, you have to realize that what they're asking for, they're asking for a lot. You should be very cautious in just granting new motions. Okay, that's number one. Now, then they get into other factors that are required uh, if you want to get a new trial. So you want to get a new trial, it's, 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 it's the, there's already been an appeal filed and you want the, the Court of Appeals to stay the appeal and send it back to the trial court. So this, these are the elements that you have to satisfy, the factors, in order to, in order to have the Court of Appeals grant what you're looking for. Okay, so let's go. There's five factors. Number one, which is probably the most important. The evidence in question is such, and I'm reading here, this is from the opinion. By the way, the last quote uh, was from State versus Mathis. That's a South Carolina case. This quote is from a different case. There's a number of cases that quote this. And this, these are the five factors that are required. Number one, the evidence in question is such as will probably change the results if a new trial is granted. I mean, the evidence is so important that you discovered after the trial concluded that it will probably change the results if a new trial is granted, which means that if the evidence is pointing to innocence and the, the, the verdict was guilty, that's when you get this, you grant this new motion, this motion for a new trial. But short of that, you don't. So the evidence has to be very significant. Number two, the evidence has been has been discovered since the trial. Meaning the evidence was discovered after the trial concluded. You just discovered this evidence. You couldn't have known about this evidence before and just not presented it, and now ask a motion for, file a motion for a new trial and say, oh, we have this new evidence, we didn't present it, and now we want, you know, it's, we want to present this evidence. No, it has to be that it was discovered after the trial. Number three, the evidence could not have been discovered prior to trial by the exercise of due diligence, which means that if you were doing your job, if you were doing your job properly, you would have discovered this evidence, so then you can't claim afterwards, oh, I just discovered this evidence. Well, that's only because you weren't doing your job. If you were doing your job properly, you would have discovered this evidence, so then you cannot claim afterwards, well, I only discovered this evidence after the trial concluded, and therefore I should, get, I, should, I should get a new trial. You can't do that. You've got to do your due diligence, and if you do your due diligence, you would have found this information, you cannot claim afterwards that we should get a new trial. That's number three. Okay, number four and five is really more repetitive of what we said, that the evidence has to be material, it has to talk to the innocence and the guilt of the party. So these, basically what these, what these, requirements are that now you found new evidence and you want there to be a new trial then you've got to have the evidence in question has to be such that it will probably change the result of the trial now if we apply that to this scenario did any of the jurors say that if it wouldn't have been for you know Becky Hill talking to them they would have voted not guilty nobody said that they just said what they did tell what she told them that's all they that's all the jurors in their affidavits at least said so you would, it would seem that the first prong here, this number one, the first requirement, is not met. And something else that they make, a, they make a big deal about later on in their brief, is the Attorney General makes a big deal about in their brief, is that you know, we don't know when they discovered this information. Hopefully never said when he discovered it. And in fact, they, they, they quote to certain, uh, certain interviews that he gave and certain press conferences that he gave that he said that, that he even suggested that he, he even was noticing and observing some of this while the trial was going on. Now, remember we just said that one of the requirements is that evidence has been, has been discovered since the trial, after the trial. If you knew it before, then you should have said something before. So it seemed that they're suggesting that if he is truthful and he's telling these media outlets that he was kind of observing things already during the trial, well, then that's not since the trial. So then you fail on number two, the factor number two. And now they bring another they bring another requirement, which is in a, found in a different case. This is a DeAngelis case. And he, this is what it says in this case. It is essential to the consideration of a motion for a new trial based on after-discovered evidence that such motion shall be supported by an affidavit of the accused himself. 
meaning that Alex Murdoch has to file an affidavit in this case. The lawyers had a requirement to go to Alex, uh, Alex uh, Murdoch and get him to sign an affidavit saying that he didn't know about all this evidence, he didn't know about this, all this jury tampering and, 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 and such, and therefore, they should get, they, therefore we should get a new trial. And from this case, the DeAngelo's case, it says clearly, it is essential to the consideration of a motion for a new trial based on after discovered evidence that such motion shall be supported by an affidavit of the accused himself. It says that clearly, it's essential. And they, 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 and they didn't do it. So that's what the response is. The response of the Attorney General is saying is that you're, they're failing all over the place. They're procedural, they're, they're, it, all these procedures, they didn't follow. So this is what we call a procedural defect. There's, procedurally def uh, there's a procedural defect in uh, their motion for a new trial. Now, there's a debate about how strict judges should be when it comes to procedural defects. Because at the end of the day, if you have a real substantive issue here, and you're bringing up something that's very important to the court, and someone's rights can really be affected, how much should the, should the courts uh, be concerned with the procedural defects that a person, that, you know, that, that the attorney, you know, forgot to do? So that's the question. So the question, you know, that, that's, a debate, that's a debated issue. But let's see when it gets to the substance of the issue. What about to the substantive part? Do they respond at all to that? So there's a very small paragraph in which the attorney general responds to the substantive part, and essentially they say, you know, it might be that there there is a need to have uh, an evidentiary hearing. They kind of agree to that. But then they say like this. They say, objective investigation by SLED remains ongoing. Objective investigation, they're calling it an objective investigation because they're saying that there's actually uh, different investigators who investigated the crime. They're not, mean, meaning the investigators that investigated the crime are not the ones that are investigating these allegations. So there's, they're calling it objective. So there's an objective investigation by SLED remains ongoing. And normally when you have an investigation ongoing, right, nobody wants to say anything because they always just say, well, you know, the investigation is ongoing, so we can't comment. But here they are going to comment. And they say, but the inquiry has already revealed significant factual disputes as to claims in appellant's motion. So they're basically telling the Court of Appeals, look, you know, I know we're not supposed to talk about the uh, you know uh, the investigations by SLED, but let me tell you, we already are discovering significant factual disputes as to the claims in the appellant's motion. So they may have their jurors that are telling them one story, but we've got already, even though the the, the investigation is still ongoing, we already have factual significant factual disputes, which sounds like they've got jurors saying other things. So you know. They're just kind of letting it run. We have substantive issues to argue back. Now, again, whether that's going to make a difference, ultimately, whether a new trial is granted, I'm not so sure. Because, again, if you have these two jurors and they stand up to cross-examination saying that, you know, and testifying to what, consistent what they put in their affidavits, it's going to be tough not to grant a new, motion, a new trial. But they're just letting everybody know we've got some strong, you know, evidence on our side also saying that there's been no jury tampering. That's what it seems like. That's what they're kind of suggesting here. So what is their uh, conclusion here? What's the Attorney General's conclusion? So the Attorney General's conclusion is, well, look, you know, this is a Rule 29B mo uh, motion for a new trial, and it's procedurally defective, as uh, we've mentioned, and, you know, all the different ways it's procedurally defective. Number one, they didn't attach a an affidavit from Alex Murdoch. Number two, they didn't uh, say when they found out this information, and that's required under those uh, cases that we cited. And therefore, their suggestion is, let's give them 10 days to cure the, uh, the the procedural defects, and then you know basically let's 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 talk about it again. So they're kind of saying they're kind of punting. They're kind of saying you know let's give them ten days to fix their procedural defects. Now that's actually that's actually pretty nice of them because I think a lot of other attorneys would say no, it's procedural defective, and therefore you know you should just throw it out and I, and just ignore it. Don't even don't even don't even consider it because it's so procedurally defective. But at least they're saying. Acknowledging, I guess, you know, the, the severity of the allegations, and they're saying, okay, let them have ten days to defect, uh, to, to cure the defects, the, the the defects. Maybe get uh, Alex Murdoch to sign an affidavit. Maybe tell us where, you know, when you found this information, and then we'll take it from there. Now, that's the Attorney General's response. My personal opinion is that this has nothing to do with Rule Twenty Nine. The issue in front of the court has nothing to do with Rule 29. Rule 29b has to do with evidence that talk to the facts of the actual case. So if there's newly discovered evidence about the facts of the case, about a new witness that nobody knew about, about a new, uh, another weapon that was found at the scene, about, uh, you know, about new information that we found about, about the victim, or something that has to do with the facts of that crime, 
That is what 29, Rule 29b is talking about. That's when you're trying to bring a motion for new evidence that actually talk to the facts of the case. This doesn't talk to the facts of the case. The allegations here are about jury tampering. Jury tampering is a violation of the 6th and 14th Amendment, which guarantees a fair trial by a panel of impartial and indifferent jurors. That's what this is about. So this is allegations that some of the very basic constitutional rights were violated. So in my mind, this has really nothing to do with 29B. This has nothing to do with all those all the cases that, that the Attorney General mentions in their brief about the different factors, that the evidence in question is such. For example, the evidence in, in question is such as will probably change the results if a new trial is granted. That's the requirement. The evidence has to be so bombshelling that it has to, that it has to be that it will probably change the results of a new trial is granted. That's not the standard. We mentioned it in, in, in other cases of jury tampering. That's not the standard at all. The standard for a new trial uh, is that that uh, you know it, it, even if if the subject matter is harmful, that's it. That's the, they, essentially what the standard is. So we spoke about in other videos, but that's why I don't, in my opinion, I don't think Rule Twenty Nine B has anything to do with the allegations uh, set forth in the motion for a new trial. So are they going to? Get an affidavit by Alex Murdoch. Maybe they will anyway, just you know, to cross all their, uh, to cross their T's and dot their I's and make sure that you know that they're doing everything according to everyone's you know rule book. You know, just to satisfy Rule Twenty Nine B. But I think in reality, I don't think it has anything to do with that. Um, and I'll just, I did a little bit of research myself. I looked at, I saw this case. is a case called State versus Bryant, which is a South Carolina case. That is a case where uh, some detectives were talking to the jurors' family members. Um, about whether they can give the death penalty or not. And in that opinion, uh, the judge says that they, they basically uh, they order a new trial. They grant the motion for a new trial. They order a new trial. And they say that the only affidavits were, that were attached were affidavits by the family members. There was no affidavit attached by the accused. So it's clear from there that they didn't require an affidavit by the accused to be filed in that case. And again, I think, because I think that these are totally different issues. This is not a regular 29B motion, and therefore, I don't think you have to file the requirements, and therefore, um, I think that uh, technically, under the law, um, their motion for a new trial is does not need to file the requirements, and, and they're completely fine, uh, you know, according to the law. Now, what event, what is actually going to happen? I don't know. I don't know what's going to eventually happen, and I guess we will see, and I guess we'll keep you posted to see what the Court of Appeals eventually rules on this case. Okay, that's it for now. Please like and subscribe to the channel again and so we can continue bringing this trial analysis. See you next time.